so yeah, he was really talking about uh, TV. Uh, you spend a lot more money. You know, some of the negatives uh, of TV. It's uh, numbers are declining faster than yeah. any other uh, media right. form out there or channel. Right. It um, uh, has no measurability, and I think that that's probably one of the biggest differences uh, that's really helped the internet take on advertising, mm-hmm. like Google. And and the one thing that he really talks about is that the internet was never designed for advertising. TV was designed and right. created for advertising. Right. Radio was designed and created for advertising, right. whereas the internet was not. Yep, It's a bigger channel, and it's going to grow and become much bigger than anything we've seen, but mm-hmm. nonetheless, it is... Um, not created for it. So it is different in that sense. It does bring measurability uh, and it brings much easier uh, ability to get them uh, delivered. Mm -hmm. Uh, As we are starting to find out, there's a lot of negatives with that. You know, if you don't have the authentic story, it's harder to get through in digital media than it was with TV or radio. Harder to build the trust. Absolutely. You could put anybody could put ads on Facebook. Anybody could put ads out there on the Internet. That's the main difference. And so we're flooded with all kinds of different messages, unauthentic, unprofessional, just every angle you. So so you really have to um, be very, very uh, authentic about your messaging. Um, and v- use that data yeah. to actually in line, align yourself with your um, uh, the worldview of your clients. So brand marketing, culture-oriented, and it cannot be measured. So brand marketing is what we're going to talk about now and go into a good depth that we talked about at the beginning. Yeah. Brand marketing versus direct marketing. So brand marketing, culture oriented, and it cannot be measured. That's the biggest difference. We have to really understand that we cannot measure brand marketing. Um, what is brand marketing? Ways of the way you answer the phone, the right. on hold music. Uh, be patient and consistent with it. You got to be intentional. Uh, sponsorships. Uh, there's all kinds of ways to use events and all kinds of ways to um, uh, work with uh, brand marketing. Many different ways. Frequency is very, very important in all marketing. But uh, with frequency, we remember familiar story about um, our pictures. So what what we're talking about is he, everybody can relate to this. When we pick up a picture of us when we were nine years old we can tell the story and we have memories of it right we don't always have mem- most of our memories come from the pictures and, and it'll come from telling it because right. we've told the story so many times because we've told the story right. so many times off that picture right and we didn't have any other references that we tell the story off of right and so that resonates with us um and uh it builds um trust when you're doing it with you, you know, when you're telling that story, right? So what what the point is here is frequency matters. You got to tell the exact same consistent story, and when yeah. the, your customer or your friend starts to tell the story for you, you know that you've done a great job right. because you, they've, they they wouldn't have known it and learned it and remembered it if they didn't trust you, right? And heard it and heard it multiple times. Right. And so now we're going to compare that to d- direct marketing. Mm-hmm. Action oriented. You measure it accurately. It's probably the best thing about direct marketing. It makes the phone ring today. Attention um, uh, can turn into an order. Right. So it's that stuff that you can measure. So you can measure how many times the phone rings, how many orders you get, how many clicks you're getting from this ad, how that's converting, all that stuff, right? That's the direct marketing. Exactly. So the next section that we'd love to uh, get into from the book is SEO, search engine optimization. We all hear SEO. We've all heard the great success stories that we think are true and uh, all all of the uh, above that goes along with SEO. So um, when someone searches generically, and finds you is what 
the, you, you know, the, the dream is that you mm-hmm. can just go out and hire some company and some, you, you know, magic and that you, by just being at the top of the list, you will be able to drive your business. Right. It's kind of the, you, you know, the, um, ideology. And, and so, and even Google's changing their algorithms. Nobody really knows the exact, so we, we can't sure. like say, oh, this is uh, exact way it goes. But even, and, and if you think about an authentic customer for Google, what, what you, you know, and so let's put ourselves yeah. in Google's shoes. So Google wants their customers to be happy, obviously. Right. And what's their customers? Their customers are searchers, people right. searching. And so to have a happy customer for Google, you need to land where you want to go right. in your search. The best search The fastest results. possible way. Yeah. And you want it to be authentic. You don't want to be tricked. You don't want to be fooled. Right. If you have an advertising uh, come on you, you want it to be something that you're interested in is relevant to you. Right. And um, I believe that, you know, they're doing great uh, work to and strive uh, towards that. And so with that said, that to think that SEO is just going to drive your business, I th- think is not the smartest no. uh, path. Now, if you use SEO to try to build an authentic message, you use it as just a um, an assistant. You do not allow it to get in the way mm-hmm. of your authentic message. Right. You don't choose SEO over your authentic message or your ad or your consistency in your message. Mm-hmm. Um, where we see it uh, truly today is um, not being uh, followed. And so if you think of my ideology of, of Google and what is the uh, perfect profile if you look at it for google someone that's happy that does uh the searching and and is happy with their uh, path with google and so i'm going to say is that if you have an authentic message you have a remarkable product you have a remarkable team delivering that message mm-hmm. google loves you exactly and the, they, you will find a way organically to even be there. And the reason right. that they love you is because you're delivering to their customers right. what they want. Exactly. That's what it's all about. Sure. And, Makes sense. And to me, that is the best SEO yes. program there is. So uh, you want to be the one they uh, find when they go looking if you're trying to run an SEO uh, campaign. Far better to be sought after than um, uh, found. I just uh, believe in that wholeheartedly. Yeah. Then he gets into one of my favorite uh, subjects to talk about, that's price. Yep. And he says even price tells a story. Of course. And I really believe that. And I just, I love how most people think that a discount works, <laughs> reducing the price works, uh, And I know that most people think that even on the retail side, because Groupon Mm -hmm. is not a small program, it's very large. Coupons in general uh, and all of it, and have just personally have never understood that. I've always had the own uh, understanding myself that I always hold the dollar because this is what I do. I go far uh, above and beyond for each and every client mm-hmm. that I've ever uh, sure. dealt with. And so this is what I charge. And it's always been that way. And I, I do believe that the second that you start to drop your price, you start to use Groupons, you start to do all of that, you start to tell a story. Yeah. And you start to train your market to do it again and right. again. Wait till it, it goes on sale. Wait and wait until it goes on yeah. sale. Um, and uh, so I do believe the price tells a story. I believe price is a huge thing. Yeah. Um, uh, and um, and some it says the, something about your product or service too. If you sell, if if you sell digital marketing and you charge a hundred dollars, that says one thing about you. If you sell digital marketing and you charge ten thousand dollars, it automatically says something different about you. Absolutely. Doesn't mean it's true. But it still tells a story. Some of the things that I got down here is cheap equals scared. <laughs> yeah. Price is a signal, just like you're saying. Yeah. Um, uh, 
not pricing, uh, not promising change, just cheaper. Mm -hmm. That's what usually people are doing. Instead of looking at their product and saying, you know, maybe our product isn't remarkable. Maybe our message isn't remarkable. Maybe our team's not remarkable. Somewhere in there. Right. Instead of looking at it in those lenses, what they do is they drop the price and just use that as a crutch and move on. That's not sustainable and it's not a wise, good business. No. And and this is where I find it different than most businesses. I find you're not doing the client justice because when you take all the profit out, you stop you doing the right yeah. things. You just can't. And, and I see it, you know, coming from the yacht industry, whenever we would do a very low margin deal, those are always the ugly ones because we didn't have the money and then we'd struggle versus always doing the right thing. Right. Uh, and so... Anytime I've seen price dropped, I've seen negativity uh, within that deal yep. somewhere, somehow, yeah. always. Free ideas spread. Yes. We've had that conversation just with one of your family members you were mentioning. Yeah, that's uh, right. Uh, uh, exactly. Free ideas do spread. Uh, I- ideas attached to cost do not spread as easy. It doesn't right. take a genius to figure yeah. that one out. If it costs um, something, it's going to be it, harder. It took a genius to really figure out to get us over the edge to start giving free information. Yeah. But once it had been initiated, to me, it's it's common sense. It's a no-brainer. Uh, and so uh, what they're uh, saying is trust this person. It's like a boot camp. And that's why frequency absolutely matters why we are so uh, tenacious and committed to our uh, content. Think of it as a boot camp uh, when you're trying to get, you got to give them a lot of content because you got to build that trust. What is boot camp? You're learning to trust everybody you you live, um, uh, I mean, not live, live, but sleeping right next to you. Mm -hmm. These people you have to count on for your life and death many times when it comes to uh, boot camp, you know, that's, it's a, it's a trust of life and death. It's again, it's a great, you know, extreme example to kind of, um, uh, bring home what we're trying to talk about is that trust, that real trust. Um, and lowering the price does not build the trust. Nope. It actually does the opposite. Sure. Uh, and so, um, when you really think of that boot camp and that trust and how you build it, a lot of people say, oh, frequency, you don't want to send that much out. Yes, you do. Yeah. More. More. More is yeah. the answer, always. <laughs> the, the, the other one is, um, and probably a lot of people, especially East Coast, know this one, Union Square Cafe. So they grew quite large. So they had an amazing uh, business there in New York, and they were doing very well. Isn't, I think that's San Francisco, right? Union Square? Union Square, San Francisco. Why yeah. am I thinking? Yeah, Times Square is what you're thinking. Yeah, I don't know why, but I was thinking New York, to be honest. Yeah. For some reason, I don't know. But you are right. Yes, it is uh, San Francisco. I only know because that's where I proposed to my wife. Ah, oh, very <laughs> good. Yes. So um, uh, they opened up a huge... Um, coffee shop. Pro- program. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Going across the board. So, yes, they opened up mini coffee shops. Mm-hmm. They've opened up mini. But what... Really is the, where we're going with this is that they made a huge cultural change. Yeah. And what they did is they did away with tipping. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it is funny because it is an Australian in um, uh, like Australia as a country believes in this exact. No tipping. It's just built in. Yes. Yeah. And and they believe uh, we are wrong. Sure. Um, uh, and, and it goes to this is why, you, you know, if you look at it. So what their ideology was is that let's take away tipping and let's just charge 20 percent more mm-hmm. on the uh, mill. Yeah. And logically, it makes sense. It's like, OK, somebody pays 20 percent tip anyways. We're not going to charge them really that much more. Mm-hmm. We're just going to change the way that uh, our culture receives uh, the payment. Yeah. Now, if you go into a marketing standpoint, though, that's not as easy as you would think. Right. Because we've got clients that think their perspective, obviously, is in the United States where everybody tips. Mm-hmm. That they're going to pay 20% more for the mail and then 20% for the tip. Right. They're not really, you know, that's a very complicated story yeah. to get the audience to understand the yeah. value. Right. It, 
came down to a story to tell about race, equality, and the entire uh, expense for aligned people. Mm -hmm. So what I really read between this is that they honed in on their world view so specifically, so detailed that it absolutely worked. The Union Square Cafe was able to do was really what they were doing was tapping into their worldview like you were talking about. And one of the things they talked about um, was that they wanted to increase by 20 percent to spread the tip across the board. So not just for the waiters, but for every single person in, working. The staff, the that's staff, right. I remember the, him the, specifically. The cooks, all that. And so that was one of their core beliefs. So they were able to then take that message and try to spread that among other people who had that same worldview. So it worked. And it's incredible because I've waited tables a lot. And I will tell you when I read it, I was like, oh. And, and uh, one of the challenges now, I remember um, them trying to sell the waiters. That was one of the most yeah. complicated. Because out of all of the whole program, the waiters actually will make less money. Yeah. They're the only ones in the equation, but they will make less money. So if you don't sell it, and obviously they did a great job of the whole worldview, the whole why, yeah. you know, all of it, you're going to have, it was a challenging um, task they took on. Right. Uh, Australia works because it's the culture. Yeah. It's the whole country. It's, right. It's their culture. Yeah. So the next area he really gets into, and this is why I love this book, because he ties all of his books into it. He's got a book on permission marketing, and that's the, yeah, a whole book in it. Uh, this incredible. Book is so full of stuff. He n is um, the content king. <laughs> so permission marketing starts off with you know most of the time we're as marketers, uh, more most marketers steal for attention. Right. So they you're taking away the time by putting an ad before something that somebody really wants to watch. Without their permission. Right. And what it really comes down to is where it really started with, and in social media is part of it, but it really comes down to email. Some of the reasons that we have issues with email today and why we have to segment it and personalize it is because people started to really mass email. Yes. Yeah, uh, spam email. Yeah. Yeah. And so we've had lots of issues. Yeah. And that's what he's really saying is stealing your attention. Right. Cause even some paid ads or most paid ads are going to be somewhat targeted towards your specific today. Hopefully. Yeah. Uh, worldview yeah. and interests. And so, uh, yeah. what he's talking about, is is earning the right to deliver the message and it's still mm -hmm. even today comes a lot back to uh email mm -hmm. and now we're going to texting mm -hmm. in um uh and he talks about a uh campaign here um in in a minute and, and i'll get into the twitch we were talking about yeah. and and he talks about some of the stats so when you're spamming people and whatnot you're gonna get i think the national average is like seven percent uh, open, open, open rate. You, you you just don't have high success there. You're you're working with just pure quantity, no quality. Right. You haven't earned the right to deliver the message, so they're probably not going to really listen or resonate. So what he's saying is, is you know, treat people with respect, pay attention. You know, make sure it's got value to them, to their worldview. Real permission is what he's saying, and so he's not just talking about. Yes, I said you could send me an email. Right. He's going much deeper than much that. Deeper. What he really means is real permission. If you go away, people will miss your emails. That's They'll right. miss your posts. Right. They will miss the content that you're giving them. Right. That's not easy to do. That is not easy to do. Especially as, you know, for us, we're really learning just on our own company mm -hmm. to really have the original uh, content that we've made that's authentic. Right. It's very challenging yeah. uh, to really do it right. Yeah. And then we talk about the social media uh, landscape today. And um, so you don't really have permission. Now, right. I do love LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Because LinkedIn is permission-based social media. Mm -hmm. Only one. But most social media, you don't have um, any permission. Right. The platform does. The platform does. Right. Or ultimately, the customer, client, or prospect does. Yeah. So, it, you, you know, it's not great um, variables for a business. Right. But it is what it is. Right. So deal with it with humility um, uh, and, and build in a whole program uh, to get permission. 
uh, our, all of our emails, everything, you know, we go at it. You know, you don't want us. We give them every way as quickly as possible to if they've found themselves on our list and they don't want to be there, we get them off. So not just do we get permission up front. We continuously offer uh second strategy Mm -hmm. permission just to make sure that we're in tune with it and we're not hitting someone up that doesn't want to read it that's not good and wise uh marketing no some of the other you know know, be remarkable uh getting back to so we go from permission marketing Mm -hmm. he wrote a whole book on it i can't suggest uh highly enough uh for people to go read that book. We will be doing a uh, podcast on it here shortly. But then we got Purple Cow, which is, you know, probably one of the most famous books. I don't know if it's maybe the numbers wise, but I do know that most people in business sales know the concept of yeah. the Purple Cow. Sure. You got to be remarkable. Remarkable. So intentionally uh, producing a Purple Cow is obviously uh, the first set right. of uh, the variables to become successful. Lots of marketers use stunts. They use all kinds of other um, uh, forms to trick people. We have a lot of it. You know, you look at media, you look at many other forms. I get hit up because we're in marketing and I expose my name and my information so much that I get digital marketers coming at me all the time. Oh, yeah. Me too. And it's a, (laughs) you know, if I, and I told you this earlier today, if someone, I saw someone doing some good work and whatnot, yeah, you know, I would say, you know, good job, good work. I don't get that though. What I'm getting is just really uh, poor thought out uh, sales scamming. Yeah. I mean, just spamming me, excuse me, not just spamming me like crazy, just sending me. The same thing over and over, written a little bit different sure. with no real content, no value to me. Right. Just wasting my time. Right. So he brings up uh, Fight Club. Just really, uh, obviously, the movie talking about um, uh, first the rule of Fight Club. The first rule <laughs> of Fight Club. Don't talk about Fight Club. Don't talk about uh, Fight Club. <laughs> and then the masses, you, you, you know, it's just uh, incredible. If you want to talk about a worldview, if you want to talk about a real great success story yeah. in uh, telling an authentic story that you can't tell, <laughs> yeah. uh, it's just incredible. Right. Um, and then he bridges it with AA. And for me, AA is, uh, I've just been reading about it and hearing about it on the outside world all of my life. And uh, in sales, you're always being uh, hit up by this and that. And NA, believe it or not, comes up quite a bit. Yeah. And evangelism, NAA, always uh, go hand in right. hand uh, to me. And so I really, I, I felt like this, it resonated with me. So what I read uh, is evangelism designed into the fabric of what you are creating, tell themselves. So what you're doing is trying to to generate such an authentic message that they'll tell themselves the story and then turn around and tell other people because mm-hmm. it makes them feel good. Because it makes them feel good. It just you you know for me that was um, uh, in one of these days whenever we uh, get the time and effort to go after churches, I think we're gonna have some of the most fun in our entire life. Mm-hmm. Because I really believe some of the most authentic stories comes from that environment. I think we're going to have a blast. Yeah. Kind of leads us right into uh, the next one. What (laughs) is fake? Um, uh, Waves of distrust. The internet. Yeah. Wow. I mean, we want to talk about distrust there. Distrust. What has the, the internet has definitely created a, uh, massive ball of uh miss uh or or lack of trust right distrust um you can get anything if you want a a message to say something the opposite of someone else it's really easy to find on the internet yeah of course Um, find anything and and so with that makes marketing extremely challenging today with it being the largest most uh important channel there is 
So you got to earn their attention. You're not going to get it by just running standard mass no. uh, ads like we used to. Right. So uh, you got to earn their att- attention. Trust pays for the investment required uh, to really tell your story um, uninterrupted. You're not going to get to be able to tell them your story without trust. Mm-hmm. And you cannot gain trust without earning their attention. Right. And then what he is saying is if you do get to tell the story uninterrupted, you're going to get more trust. Right. Um, uh, and then going back to, you know, how we were talking about uh, getting them to make them feel good, to get them to tell themselves the story because it makes them feel good. So that's what you need. You need it to resonate so much that it could be uh, spread word of mouth. So you want them telling themselves the story to the point where they'll go tell their friends, mm-hmm. their family, the exact same story. Right. Because that people will trust more than advertising, more than anything. Right. Action builds trust. Spend more time doing. Uh, one person at a time. No one looking um, uh, day by day. When you are working. So really what uh, I'm suggesting here is when no one's looking. When... The day is challenging and things are hard. That's when you, if you actually truly put in the effort and you dig deep and you're doing it for the right reasons, mm-hmm. for your why, right? Um, uh, your story will be uh, spread. You, you, your efforts will be rewarded. Yep. So getting back to very specific, smallest viable market. Uh, and so, um, famous to the tribe. So what most business owners and something that I just spoke with, um, a gentleman that has been in the TV industry all of his life and, uh, he's in radio now. He actually started in radio for like 10 years, then went to TV for like 20 years, kind of retired. And now he's back having fun, but he's with radio. And so I sat down and had a good conversation with him. And what he was telling me is the main difference that he struggles with with radio versus TV Mm -hmm. is that he was able to sell heavily on the fame of the business owner. Because the one thing I do know is that um, business owners have some ego. Uh, It's a large portion of what drives them, what motivates them. And so being famous is not a bad thing. Right. They, They really want it. Sure. With the smallest viable market, it's a lot easier to become famous yeah. at that level. Right. Definitely. That is our goal. Right. Um, so he goes on to talk about famous to the tribe when you can have a thousand true fans and be famous to them. You can be successful. You can be. Exactly. Keep on drilling down. Yeah. Um, uh, and he kind of uses it, you know, like there's one over here with 500,000. Lots of uh, companies with 500,000. But if you try to start off yeah. uh, with a 5,100, I mean, a 500,000 goal, you're going to be way too broad and you're yep. just not going to be successful. Right. Tell your story in the right way to the right people. That's better than publicity. Yes. Social and tribal networks are very, very real. Yeah. And one of the things that I get from them the most, and I use them all the time, but people, I don't believe that they're a strong uh, direct marketing. Um, They are great to give us a lot of data. There's a great way for us to get that uh, attention Mm -hmm. and to build trust. I think they're all amazing for that. But what I see more often than not is people trying to use social media for direct marketing, and I don't think it works nearly as well. And the reason is, is I don't believe that that's what people want that much during that time. So the more that you deliver that free content that they want, that's actually got value, the more attention you get and the more trust you get, the more ability you actually have to go get those loyal customers, the customers that you want. Mm -hmm. Isn't that marketing though? That is absolutely marketing. Yes. And, And really, why do you market? To get trust. Uh... The funnel. We all talk about the funnel. And I do like, he's giving me some great ones because so often what I see with the funnel 
is the marketer really tries to sell the business and, the, and their clients on the, the funnel process and that they're going to bring in thousands of people to the top of the funnel. Right. And it's their job, meaning the business or the business owners, to pull them out as loyal uh, customers. Yeah. And so one of the things that I found great is he walks you through it. Now, he uses a, a Twitch story that really has better numbers than most of our campaigns. So I was like, oh, Uh, but it really uh, (laughs) resonated with me and made a lot of sense. And it's really why I think we have so much success. Yeah. So we're talking about, you know, the funnel, uh, as we discuss a lot in marketing and uh, talking about getting all the people to the top side of the funnel and pulling them down. What Seth really says, uh, you have a lot of leakage in most funnels. Mm -hmm. And so you lose a lot of those uh, people, which is inevitable. You're going to lose a lot, but what rate you lose. And so the national average is what they're saying to get someone to just view is only 7%. That's not a loyal customer. That's just a view. So if we go off of national averages that Google uh, collects and tells us, um, we're not going to be successful. Yeah, that's not a successful uh, percentage mm-hmm. of of open. So, what he's saying is, is you got to really uh, earn their attention. If you have a small enough viable market, you're more in tune with them. You know what they want, and you're gonna have some success stories like this, like the uh, in Twitch. Probably not the exact numbers for everybody to believe in. They have some advantages in the video game world mm-hmm. and the social networks with the kids. But so there's a kid and he sends out, you know, 18,000 um, or he sends out a post and gets like 18,000 uh, on an 18,000 follower. And so basically he gets one out of 50 to open his post. This is where it gets incredible. 18 out of 50 commented on the post now that is a funnel Mm -hmm. that will show success significant success because engagement like that is what you're looking for right so everything gets better when you gain their trust and you start getting engagement like that that is just spewing out trust those kids are following him they trust him they think he's what they want yeah. You know, he's. Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, so then we get into lifetime value, which is very, very uh, important. Uh, and the reason is, is, I think a lot of people, a lot of businesses miss this one. Yeah. And so Seth uses the grocery store. Once again, going to the extreme. Mm-hmm. And so what he's saying is, is you can look as, at a grocery store. And so we're going to advertise for a grocery store. Right. So you try to look at the customer and you look at how much does it cost to get an ad in front of them. So let's say it costs you $10 Mm -hmm. to get in front of a customer to get them into your uh, grocery store. And so they come into the grocery store and they spend um, uh, $26. And then at the end of it, you make about $10. Mm Mm-hmm. And that you paid for $10 to get them in there. Right. And so a lot of people are going to say, well, that doesn't make any sense. Why would I do that? Right. Because well, they're not considering the there's lifetime There's a lot of value. reasons yeah. you should do that. Right. Now, I've exaggerated it, too. It probably costs more than $10 I think he was saying like $500 them. to get somebody in there, and then maybe they make 50 or something like that. Right. Well, and, and that's even more to really make the point. Let's say it costs you, yeah, uh, $100 to get that. Yeah person into the grocery store mm-hmm. and then they spend fifty dollars and now you haven't you've lost 70 80 because you had to buy the right, food that right. you sold them right so now you've really um uh lost money so what lvt is is lifetime uh what is the lifetime value yeah. and that that's a different um way of looking at it and it makes complete sense because how often does someone go to the grocery store right once a week I would say is probably the norm Mm -hmm. unless you have kids and we don't really want to discuss those. (laughs) So you're just a normal adult and you get to go once a week. It doesn't take very many weeks to figure out that it was worth it at a hundred dollars to get them in there that first time. To get them in there that first time. Right. And so lifetime uh, value is very, very uh, critical. If you're going after a one-stop shop item, 
then the lifetime value is that purchase. Right. And um, then he was even talking about, you know, now that you've got them in there, if they live in that neighborhood, maybe that becomes their grocery store they go to all the time, like you're talking about. So they're coming in weekly. Then you make that experience great for them. Then now they're going to use word of mouth and tell their neighbors and their friends, hey, I go to this grocery store and I had this experience. You know, yeah. I brought in a food that went bad faster than the expiration date and they just gave me two for free or whatever it is. Now they're spreading. So that one life or that cost that it costs to get that one person in is now spreading to get multiple people in. So the lifetime value is way greater than even just that one person potentially. Absolutely. And I would say when you're looking at uh, early adopter versus, you know, someone on the long tail side, I would be personally willing to spend a lot more money Mm -hmm. for the early adopter, whether I made money on it or not. The reason being is because they'll spread it. They'll exponentially make me Mm -hmm. more money. And so, so yeah. Um, And so he talks about the long tail and, you know, kind of the way I interpret it is more off of like the uh, bell curve, but he's just talking kind of the opposite when you see businesses just boom. And so, uh, and I I guess it does follow the bell curve when I look at like Facebook and all of them, you you know, where you just um, uh, work and work and work and and where most people don't see it is they see the business successful in the long tail. They see all the money being made uh, in that area. But what they don't realize is the businesses that are highly successful in that, they did it with the early adopters. They did it at the beginning when they weren't making mm-hmm. money. Right. Study Google, study Facebook. When they did all of their work, they were poor. They were working their tails off for years yeah. before they became right. uh, profitable. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that's when they put in uh, their true diligence and that's when they put in their true marketing. Now they have all of that in place and it works for them. Yeah. So peer to peer, the network effect. And I really loved what he meant by this and is what he's really getting back to is the word of mouth. Um, and so the peer to peer network, if you really build your marketing campaign off of that concept, it's going to be the most cost effective and most successful uh, possible. Uh-huh. So when you're looking at it, what will I tell my friend? Why will I tell my friend? So we're trying to put ourselves in the shoes of the prospect that's hearing the story because we want them uh, to tell their friends and we want them to know why they will tell them. Yes. That's how you build a peer to peer network and marketing. Yeah. Word of mouth is the best marketing. Yes. And so uh, technology uh, charts, I mean, triggers. So when we look at his, uh, charts here is what he's really talking about is uh, Facebook and, and crossing the biggest uh, chasm. what we were just talking about. They worked for years. And um, so in our lifetime, very few brands have crossed over fully to the mass market. Starbucks, which is familiar to most people uh, reading this, but hasn't made it all the way. Neither has Heineken or even the bagel. So, so going to the masses is just um, uh, crazy hard. Crazy hard. Um, so that's the content finally wrapping up. This is Marketing by Seth Godin. There's so much content in this book, and we still didn't even cover half of it through these four podcasts. So man, I encourage you guys to definitely go check out the book. Also, Please do. Yeah. Also, um, man, thank you guys for listening. If you made it all the way through our podcast so far, man, we love you guys. Please check us out on iTunes, subscribe, please um, rate and review it. Give us some feedback because we actually do want to tailor these to what's going to help you guys. So send us an email, give us a review and we'll see you next time. And also just real quick, if you guys need any of the charts, you need any uh, information from us in any way, please don't uh, hesitate to hit us up. uh, We'll definitely get you that information. Yep. All right. Thanks. Thanks.